I'm Becca, and tonight we're making soap. We're going to be making a beer soap tonight. So this is for a one-year anniversary for my husband and I. He is Danish and Hispanic, and I am Irish. And I don't know why I can't remember this. I'm Irish, Indian, and French. So my inspiration is Guinness. I actually used to love to drink this back in the day. Uh, and the other one I don't have because someone already tossed it was the Modelo. So we picked up a Modelo and um, what you need to do with that, let me bring you down, is you're going to um, make it flat, then freeze it. And then so there, the light colors are the beer and the dark one is the Guinness Stout. So we've got that aside here. We're going to be working with a tall skinny mold tonight. This is a little one. I wanted to try out the secret feather swirl. And my recipe is coconut oil, rice bran oil, castor oil, palm kernel oil, and some shea butter. It's super fatted to 61%. I did, I weighed this out up to about the top here and it came out to be uh, 20, what was it? 21 ounces. And I'm figuring I want to pipe about eight ounces on top. I, I'm hoping this comes out right because this is the first time I use this mold. Um, and then we're going to scent this Irish Danish beer soap with coconut blue agave. And we're probably going to call it five o'clock somewhere. So that's what I'm going to go with tonight. This is from Crafter's Choice from WSP. And this one, um, it said it does discolor your soap to a tan so i'm going to set aside some of the soap uh so it's white and not scent that part so that that part won't discolor and i've got tv got some extra gold dust environment friendly um this is from nurture i might put a little bit of the solar storm glitter from nurture so those are really pretty. I'm not sure if I'm going to use this one. This one is by Woody uh, Woods Goodies, my girlfriend, Erin. Um, it's called Flying Monkeys, and it's a beautiful gold. So we'll see what we're going to do with that. And let's see, I'm at, I'm out of battery. <laughs> Real life people, real life. Okay, so we put the batteries in this one. I'm at 90 degrees, which isn't too bad. So what we're going to do, I'm going to bring in a little bit better here. Uh, we're going to put, I already measured my lie. I'm going to put my glasses on. And we're just going to slowly melt this in so it doesn't burn. Um, I didn't get to do that yet, so hopefully I don't have any issues with this. So there's a lot of sugar in this, and kind of like a milk soap. If you're working with milk soaps, you have to make sure it's frozen. Some people do um, boil your their beers to try to get the alcohol out, but I've also heard just making it flat and freezing it works fine too. So I did not boil this. And I'm hoping this behaves good because this is the first time I do this. So you guys are watching live with me as it happens. Um, I am going to be adding some goat milk to it, but I don't want this to burn. So I'm going to add it um, a little bit later. So if you're there, just maybe comment and don't let me forget to add that in. So this is going to be a really simple soap. We're just going to let it be the natural color of the beer. It's going to discolor to a tan because of the fragrance. And this will probably um, make a tan soap to begin with because it, it's a beer soap. And I probably would have liked to have looked up the beauty benefits of beer to tell you guys about it. But it was just cold and rainy here and super cold and I just did not do that today, so sorry. 
but you can Google beauty benefits of beer and like bath and body products and soap and uh, comment below what you find. I'm going to probably look it up again. We uh, went downtown tonight to uh, check out the Harry Potter. It's called uh, Coffee Muggles. And uh, so that um, some hot cocoa there. So we got some nice hot cocoa. Only about 40 degrees out with a with the wind going here in Texas. I know it's not snow or anything, but it man, it feels really cold to us. Uh, so this looks like it's doing pretty good here. I don't think uh, I heard some people had some issues with just it volcanoing when they added their lie, but I I think that was because they didn't freeze didn't freeze it and make sure that all the bubble, um, all the carbonation was out. Now, when you, when you work with a, a cold uh, ice cubes of water or whatever liquid it is that you're working with, there's usually not a lot of fumes. I'm not getting really, and I'm adding it really slowly, so I'm not getting a whole lot of fumes. Otherwise, you would see them coming up. All I smell is actually um, the beer, which actually smells really nice. So I'm curious as to see how this is all gonna work out and come out. And let that mix down a little bit more. Grab my skin. I need to separate out some of the batter and I forgot to bring my scale over. I got a new scale and I'm all excited about it. And it doesn't take any batteries if I don't want it to, which I've been buying a lot of batteries for my other scale, so I'm very excited to have this one. It's the um, KD8000. Amazon has it, so I can put a link down below for you guys if, uh, if you're looking for a really good scale. And my oils are already all ready. And what I usually do to my soaps is I have some extra, which I do. This is sodium lactate. And this is 21 ounces. So usually I do about almost three quarters of a cat full for that. And what this does is it's a natural salt that will harden your bar. Um, later on, you can add a little bit of sugar with water or a little bit of honey to increase the bubbles. Uh, if you've got, uh, when you add salt to your soaps and things like that, it decreases the, the bubbles in the lather. So you usually want to add a sugar to kind of balance that out, even though there's probably sugar in this beer. So here's the plan as this is finishing to melt. We're going to have a, um, a gear tie that you can get at, at Walmart. And it's just very flexible. You can make it to fit into side inside your mold. And that's what you want to do at times. Make sure it's flat and that it fits in. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour in my tan color. And then I'm going to pour the white color down the center. And then I'm going to make this motion. It's going to be already at the bottom. And I'm just going to swish it from side to side coming up, and that should make the secret feather. Um, if you want to do two secret feathers, you would leave this in on like one side like that, and uh, you would pour like one row of white on one side, and then you would do another line on the other side, and as this one comes up from side to side, you would pull it out, and then you would go back down, go side to side through the other line, and you would get um, two secret feathers, which is really pretty. And it would kind of look like, I guess, like hops or something like that. That's what I'm hoping. Okay, so that looks like that's all melted. And I had a technical issue earlier was I couldn't find uh, a ring that goes around. I just bought a new uh, piping tip, and I couldn't find my ring that went around it. So I took a rubber band, and I'm improvising. 
since it's like 11 something at night and I'm not going to go run out to the stores anywhere. All right, so we've got that already. Our fragrance is here. I want to add my Kaolin clay. I'm going to add a tablespoon and a half. So I got a few new things tonight to um, playing around with. This is from Norpro to maybe um, help me pour it and have a little bit better control than the dollar store ones. And if you just blend in your Kaolin clay first, that works out really good too. So, all right. Okay, now. Okay. All right. And that goes. And I also want to add. Milk next. So far, no volcanoes, and we're looking good. Again, this is cold process, so the only reason why it would volcano would be because of the carbonation and the alcohol. So I think we're okay. I'm gonna just mix that up a little bit more and add my goat milk. And if you can see it, it's a really light, I don't know if you can see it. It is a really light, pretty tan color right now. So hopefully it will kind of stay that way, but it, it is supposed to darken up with the scents. We'll see how that comes out. And then I also need to separate at least eight ounces. So I turn this on. This and make sure I pour out eight ounces. Figured eight ounces is enough to do the top and my sweat. Eight ounces. And so I want to make sure I whiten this part. So hopefully this will get nice and white. Or at least a creamy white. Try and get it really white. I want white. I think that's pretty good. Pretty white to me. Alright, so let me get I kind of want this to thicken up because I know I don't have what this I think this will work good, this little mini blender for the white, just to try to get it going here a little bit. So I do want to pipe it, and I don't want to be waiting all night. I hope that helps. If not, I'll have to come back to it. Just check that in a little bit. I did want to add a little bit of honey, which I didn't add to that part, but I'm going to add it to this one. About a teaspoon. And then we're going to be adding our fragrance as well now. 
And I think I mentioned the scent. It's coconut blue agave, and it smells really good. It smells beachy and kind of alcoholy, I guess, like an alcoholic beverage on the beach. That's what it smells like. And I'm not adding the scent to the white part. That way it doesn't just color. It stays nice and white. good you don't want it um to trace more than that because you don't want pudding you want to be able to move the other one fluidly through it this smells really good okay here's our mold and i'm just going to make sure that that is in the center i want because this is a a tall skinny mold i want to make sure that my gear tie is in the center. Just pour this in. That. I want to put this in this new one and see how it poured out. Making more dishes for myself, but that's okay. We're gonna try something new. This is a little cumbersome to work with here like this. Okay, we're gonna do it like this. Oops. Hmm, okay. So, don't think you can quite see what I'm doing, but what happened is some of it fell. I'm gonna pour this down the side to push it back over. Um, it's a little harder to work with a smaller mold like this. Hmm. And I'm going along the side again. Just try to push my white line back over to the middle. And I'm going to pour my white again. I think what I'm going to end up doing is kind of spooning this in. Let's see. My gear tie is messing me up. Definitely smell the alcohol from the, the beer and from um, the fragrance. It smells very liquory ish. It's so everywhere. This is messy. Pour white down the center again. Fragrance thick. I did do a water discount, but um, the fragrance is kind of thickening this up a little bit. That's okay. I still want the white to be pretty fluid. I think we'll still be okay as far as the design. 
Trying to get the air bubbles out as we go. Here's some more white. And it looks like I overestimated somehow how much soap this is going to make. Oh, okay, that's okay. That's that's going to be okay. So yeah. tapping this down. There's the white again. I'm just going to pour the rest of this on top. Okay, so I have all the air bubbles out, it looks like, and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pull up gently a little bit and then swish and then swish and swish. As I'm pulling up, I'm swishing from side to side. And then that's the whole secret feather. Um, I'm only doing one because this is a uh, skinny mold. I think it would be really hard and challenging to do two secret feathers in one mold. And I'm just filling in the extra soap batter where I pulled out all the soap. Make sure there's no air bubbles. And then I'm just waiting for this to thicken up so that I can pipe it on. And I'm thinking hopefully this is still enough to pipe with. I don't want to put this in a mold yet um, in case I need it for something and maybe I might need to add more white to it or something. So I'm going to try and blend this a little bit more. So it's still pretty fluid because of all the water and the TD. Um, so we're going to have to let it set up a little bit more because it's still too runny to be piping with. Well, that's a bummer because this one's nice and put in -y. And this one's perfect for piping, probably. That is probably perfect for piping something. So that's more what we're looking for is something 
thick like that. What are you guys doing to stay warm during this cold winter weather? Let me know. We've made chili, lots of hot cocoa. We've had some fires outside. And I'll be able to show you guys the cut of this tomorrow. And I'm not sure if it's going to darken up right away. I've never worked with this fragrance before or beer soap. So it may just darken over the weeks as it cures. Um, and you can always check in on Facebook at Beck is by the Bay. And I'll give you some updates on this soap because I'm curious as to how it's going to come out. If you guys know, I'm not good at um, videos as far as like, I don't have a way to record them and edit them and fast forward this part. So, sorry about that. I was hoping it would go a little bit faster. While we wait for that, I will... Um, go get the other soap I didn't get to show you guys. Here's a soap I didn't get to show you that I unmolded. And this is the lemon lavender that I did with the flower swirls. And then I hand stamped them with a sunflower. And they all came out a little bit different. I was hoping the color would go through on the back side, but um, they're still really, really pretty. They're all really a little bit different. Really, really pretty. And then I couldn't help myself. So here's the back side of uh, some other ones I did. And the flowers, um, it, it was too thick to make the flower on this one. So I twirled it and then I stamped it on both sides. So these, these go um, with a matching lotion that has magnesium and MSM in it. And there's a bunch of little 
minis that will be available in the hearts. I'm probably going too fast. They're actually really, really pretty. Um, I was going to paint a little bit of glitter, but I may not because I think it looks really pretty on its own. So I may just leave them just stamped like that, showing the pretty colors. They just all came out a little bit different. Really pretty. I'm gonna put these aside. Sometimes when you want to do piping, it just doesn't thicken up like you want it to. So, I don't know. Let's see. I'll keep stirring. Eventually, it'll thicken up. I'm wondering if I should add glitter to the top. Or type it or just afterwards. Or just afterwards. Go grab my warming alcohol. I don't uh, usually do these late night sessions, but I don't know. We just uh, we're off schedule today, and I got up super early today, and I just I don't know. I just never fell back asleep to take a nap or anything, and I am up, so I figured I would do a soap, just midnight soaping. My husband just left to go pick up our daughter from work, so. We, uh, we're always on a different schedule than everybody else. This is the consistency I want to be piping at, and I'm not there with the white. Now yeah, honey does add a little bit of... Usually helps thicken up trace a little bit. So I'm gonna put a little dollop of honey in. See if that helps. Honey tends to um, heat up your batter and make your trace thicken up, or any kind of sugar really. So it looks like it's starting to thicken up a little bit better. Getting there, we're getting there. Ooh. These are great. I think I found these at um ATV, these little stainless steel uh, whisks. So I knew there were some small test batches I wanted to do, and sometimes you need to whip it, and sometimes you just need to stir it lightly. So, and I'm not there yet. I was waiting for, um, I've never done a beer uh, soap before, so I didn't know if you're going to smell the beer, like, once it's cured and stuff like that. I can still smell it in the batter right now. I can smell it. Um, and this, I thought, was a really, um, out of all the scents I had, was really complimentary to the beer. Because it smells like a, a beachy, alcoholic kind of drink. Um, I did order my first order from Brambleberry three days ago. And I'm trying to see how long it takes to get to me in Texas. 
uh, cause I've never ordered from them and I hear terrible things about their shipping being like really long. And so I placed my order and it said it was complete and I've been checking on it every day for the past three days cause I've been really excited to order from them. I never do. And it didn't say until the third day that it was paid and that they're going to start processing shipping it. And so I was talking to my other soap friends and they were like, it'll probably ship out on Monday. They said it usually takes them about a week to process an order, get it, whatever, ready, and then ship it out. And then it takes another one to two weeks for it to get to, to some of them. So that's about a three week wait for an order. So, and when you make soap, it's got a cure for at least a month or two months. So think about the planning that has to go into soaping. Um, if you didn't get the mold you wanted, wherever you ordered it from, sometimes it takes a month to two months to get it in the mail. And then you're waiting on ingredients to get here. And you're waiting on, um, if you don't have the supplies, you're waiting on your soap molds. And then you make your soap. And then you're waiting another four weeks to eight weeks for it to cure and be ready to use. Um, so it's a nice hard bar and all of the liquid has evaporated out. And that the sap saponification process is complete. From fat and oils into a salt soap bar. So hope, hopefully people that don't know about handmade soaps will learn to appreciate that there's a lot of time that goes involved um, in making these things. And it's a really beautiful product. And then, so when I first started soaping, I was like, okay, well, what do I do now? I'm waiting like two months to be able to use the soap I just made. And they were like, we'll make another one and make another one in practice. And so that's what I did. I started making more and more soaps and counting off the days. Okay, I made it this day. And then as you're making one a week, if you made like one new soap a week, you were like, you know, that much closer to being able to use your soap. So that was really fun. Oh, I want it to be thicker than this. Look at this. Okay, we are not there yet. Why? Let's see if I can look it up a little bit more. to it to harden it up and this recipe probably doesn't have enough hard butter so the shea butter is kind of soft i usually use uh, cocoa butter
away for probably like 20 minutes. It'll probably be perfect. But I don't, I'm just, I'm not patient at all. Slightly thicker. Mm. It's not easy to mix it in a little little container. It's just a little bit of batter. <laughs> Oh, the life of learning patience. I don't know that I've actually learned it yet. It's a process. Processing patience. Because if I pipe it too soon, it's just going to fall flat. So that's all there is to it. I don't want that to happen. Can't believe I dropped that. Oh. <laughs> I guess I'm not gonna get another soap done tonight. I was gonna do another one. This is taking quite a while. So this is the boringest part ever. Sorry. I should have known better than to try using shea butter. But I'm trying to use some up. So I usually use cocoa butter and that seems to work better for me. Um, it always seems to harden up better. That is not going to make any kind of poofy, poofy stuff that I want to do. Oh, there's got to be something else I could do to thicken this up. But I don't want to add this to it because, oh boy, I'm going to have soap that's already hard in my bowl. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not fair. I could try adding some. And adding a white stabilizer, but I've never used that either. Um, I really want it to stay white. Five hours later. <laughs> no, I hope not. Oh gosh. See what happens when people really do videos in real life? They edit this out and they speed it up and fast forward. Poofy poof. That is not, I want it to be standing up like a marshmallow. Oh, I hate that. Ah, what do we have in the arsenals here? That's been on a stabilizer. <laughs> Or vanilla white stabilizer because there's vanilla in the scent. <laughs> Possibly add a little bit in, see what's going to happen. Whoop, there we go. I pushed it in. Buggers. I 
got it. Okay, so it's usually, I think, a teaspoon or whatever. So if I did a half or whatever. That didn't have any color in it. Enough of this to add it to this. I'm such a good one. You bitty cubers. See if that helps. will go well. This might be a very tall soap. <laughs> I want to leave enough to swirl. Oh boy, this is a workout. Alright, so that seems to be helping a lot. Hoping the white vanilla white stabilizer is going to keep this white. And I don't know that I added enough, so we're going to add a little extra to make sure it stays white. And I do have something else I could add to it. Might help it help it to thicken up a little bit more. So this is by this is by Nurture Soap as well. This is called uh, Winter White Mica powder and I've used it before. It does help thicken, thicken things up a little bit and it gives it kind of a white um, color. So add a little bit of that in. I guess you could add like cornstarch, but I don't, we don't use that because we're allergic to it. So that might um, thicken it up as well, or potato starch. Um, we don't usually use that either. So if you have some other ideas to help it thicken up, let me know. Or, or something that you might have used. Just want to make sure that this um, is blended really good and not have spots of mica in it. A little bit more. 
Orange or White. has probably been oh, an hour. Okay. Whoa. Get this going. This is why I don't do piping, but I wanted to do an Irish soap and a Danish, Mexican, Hispanic slash whatever mix soap because that's what we are. And it's for our anniversary. We're going to be married for a whole year coming up um, for St. Patty's Day. We got married on St. Patty's Day. A year ago and this is kind of celebrating um my three years of soaping and our one year of anniversary and i just wanted to make something fun and cool and new and different okay so i've got my piping bag here and i'm thinking Thinking we're there. Thinking we are we are good. I'm sure this is mixed up really good, so I'm gonna get okay, so I'm gonna pour this in here. I'm hoping this is thick enough to pipe. We're almost there, so we're almost there. It'll keep thickening up thickening up. I still smell the um, beer. It smells really good. So I hope it um, stays like that through the cure because I did order a beer fragrance oil from Brambleberry. I've heard really good things about it compared to all the other um, beer fragrance oils out there. And because some of them have fruity notes in it, and I don't want it smelling fruity. I don't know about you, like beer and fruit just. That does not, like, cocktails and fruit? Yeah, but beer, that, I don't know. Beer smells, like, more earthy, hoppy. Um, so hopefully the Brambleberry one, when it comes, I'll do another one. Um, and see the difference of the one that um, is this one versus the one with the the beer fragrance oil from Brambleberry. Alrighty, let's see if that's going to work. Because this is not a super fat tip. I think it's a number 12 piping uh, frosting tip. And I want to try it out a little bit. Let's see. I don't think it's enough because it's squishing right out. I want it to be able to pipe and stay and it's, you're not there yet, people. We're getting there, we're getting there, but we're not there yet. <sighs> oh well, this is what happens. I see people do it in the, the soaping groups live and you're like, man, why does it take so long to do piping? Well, this is why. <laughs> this is why, my folks, my friends, my peoples. Because the soap batter does not want to cooperate. And other times it'll seize up on you and be super put in the thick and you're trying to slap it and pound it in the mold and you're like, what the heck was that? I barely had like 30 seconds to work with it. I don't have any swirl. My color is messy. And, you know, it's just craziness. 
like a car wreck. You're just like, whoa, what is that? And every time it moves slow as molasses like this. So that is just the way of it. Oh boy. Come on. And usually when it's cold like this, my batter sets up really quickly. So I'm pretty surprised because this is pretty close to my recipe. Um, the only difference I swapped out, um, my press percentages were a little bit different. And I swapped out the sh uh, my cocoa butter for shea butter. So, and I think that's the problem. So if you're going to do piping, make sure you add a good amount of cocoa butter. That or a hard, nice hard um, butter to help it get nice and hard and fluffy. We're not there yet. Just not there yet. Uh, waiting, waiting, waiting. So, what else can we talk about? Mm -hmm. uh, dishes everywhere. Mm -hmm. Done with this. This needs to get washed. Else, what else? I don't know. I have a last words tonight. Still need to do the glitter. Stabilize and get put away. This can get put away. <laughs> This is what I would do when you guys are not hanging out with me is clean up while I'm waiting on stuff. Um, yeah. I did, um, I'll do another video later. Um, it was a a dog's shampoo recipe that I did. I made three different ones. And the first one didn't have as much lather as I thought it would. And I, I, I kind of figured that from looking at the recipe. And it didn't really lather up on our dog. And then I tried the second one on her. And that one also didn't have very good lather. And then the third one I had um, got a recipe from someone who's a salon owner, a, a longtime soaper. And so for, for the pet salon, and so I tried it out and I added some different additives like apple cider vinegar to help lower the pH, some aloe, uh, oatmeal, neem oil, uh, one of our free range chicken eggs. I think those are the only additives. I'll have to double check. But the third recipe by her um, with my additives, and I kind of tweaked it a little bit, it lathered really good and soaked up our dog nice, um, nice small. Uh, little bubbles and things like that is very conditioning, very moisturizing. Rinsed off super easy. I mean, I have used all kinds of different dog shampoos, uh, and especially by the vets and stuff like that. And they just stay on, and you're rinsing and rinsing and rinsing. And there's so many bubbles, and you're like, this, and they don't seem as conditioning. Seem, seem like you're using a whole lot of them and stuff like that. So my dog hates getting baths. Kiara is a bull terrier mini German Shepherd and she just hates getting washed. I gave her tons of baths as a, a puppy because I wanted to make sure whatever, she was having accidents, so I'd wash her and then we'd go to the beach and then I'd wash her and she's like, what are you doing with me? You're washing me up too many times or something. And uh, so she actually really liked getting washed with the dog shampoo that I tried. I could not believe it. She just, she stayed there. I mean, I, I um, put her leash and attach her leash to like a pole or a bench that way she usually will stay sort of stay put for me but she did she stayed right there and she was just like loving it up like I was like brushing her and stuff like that and so we'll get her all soaked up nice and good and and scrubbed her up and, and she just rinsed off super easy shook off and we patted her dry and we went for a nice walk and she just was so happy um 
her and then I brushed her and even before I brushed her, her her coat was shiny and really soft. I was I was impressed. I, I'm I'm super excited about it. So I'm waiting for a soap mold to come in. Because the soap mold that I had ordered went to the wrong address for some reason. And they're like, okay, yeah, so I ended up getting a refund. And I waited like over a month and a half for it to come. And so I ordered another one. And then that one was the wrong size. And I was like, okay, it's still really kind of little. And I ordered a soap stamp as well because I figured, okay, well, I'll just make the round ones and I'll stamp them with a little paw print. Well, the recipe didn't. It wasn't very stampable. Um, it, the stamp wasn't coming out very clear. I was having problems with it. And I was like, okay, yeah, no, I'm going to go back to finding a mold that's bigger. And so I found it, but it's still on its way here. It's going to take like, you know, another couple of weeks or something. So oh, let me wait for this a little bit more and I'll show you guys. We have nothing but time on our hands tonight. So this is what I tried out. Um, it was like, this was supposed to be like little mini samples, just to sm do small batches and test it out. So here's a little paw print. And this one, she's a mini uh, Shepherd Bull Terrier. This one um, lasted for one shampoo, the whole little soap. So um, this is kind of small. It, it would be a good sample, but it probably wouldn't do a medium She's like a small medium dog. This would probably not do a medium to large dog. And so I have this one that's slightly bigger. Um, not big enough for a big dog, but this would be big enough for like a medium sized dog. Probably you'd get like at least one to two washes probably out of it. This was the three ounce round soap I tried to do and stamp it. And it just doesn't come out super clear so and I don't want to have fun stamping a bunch of them and have them look bad so we're just going to use that one up and the one that's coming um I believe this is two ounces the one that's coming is going to be a four ounce so you should get four to five washes with each one of those so that'll be exciting once it comes but it's not here yet Okay, we're, we're almost there. And I think we're almost, almost solid. And uh, test it out one more time, see if it's working. Still a little squishy. But I think we could probably get away with piping with some of this. enough to pipe. I'm gonna lay it down and squish all of this down with my spatula. All right, here we go, guys. Hope this is an episode. I don't know if that's enough soap. One, two, three, four. 
I don't think it's enough soap. I think I'm going to run out of soap is what's going to happen. So here's the plan. I'm going to mix up the rest of it with this. Sweating lactate. There's the plan. I'm going to squeeze this in. Yeah, I don't think that's enough to pipe. Let me add a little bit more white stabilizer. And then mix in the rest of my batter. That way I have enough to pipe the top. I'm going to do it. I'm just going to have to mix it with the spatula. It just got, um, it looks like it darkened up a little bit, so I'm going to add a little bit more of the white mica on your shirt. Um, hopefully that should just rebalance this back out again. Like that. I'm hoping it'll at least stay fairly white. That was the plan. Plans change sometimes, and that's okay. But I'm hoping the vanilla stabilizer will work and I'll have a fairly white top. I'm afraid to add more TD to it because it'll be too soft. Um, too wet and liquidy. This this will be good to pipe. So I'm gonna stick this back in my cup. Let's try this one more time. And this is why I don't do piping on the soaps. Is it takes you guys never see this with a lot of the other soapers. They don't show you how long sometimes it takes for their um, piping to set up. They like pause it, come back one, two hours later, and they're like piping and it looks perfect. And you're like, oh, that's so cool. I wanna do piping too. And then you're like, man, that took me three hours for that to set up. I spent all day making one soap. <laughs> 
Yeah, sometimes. That's happened to me before when I tried doing piping. And I didn't realize I needed to change my recipe so that it would set up better. But I really wanted this recipe. So I wanted to see how it would work. This would have taken a lot longer had this been a larger recipe. I'm pretty sure of that. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure it would have taken longer. You're done. Come on, come on. So everywhere, everywhere. Here we go. I think we're down to the. Twisty, twisty part. Okay, I have not. Oops, I got some bubbles. I don't want bubbles. Telling you, it's harder than it looks sometimes. I'm gonna scrape it and start again because I'm just not liking it. Because I can. So that's what I'm doing. I think it was a little too liquidy at the bottom because I didn't quite get all the soap out. But now I did. So it should be, should be okay. Here we go. Now, my lines, I'm not lined up to my lines here. You can see my lines for cutting are going to be in the wrong spot. So I'm going to ascribe it and do that one more time. See if I can get it to come out even. Messy, messy. Here we go. Third time's a germ? I think so. I squeezed all that down. I'm going to start at my line. Go from there and go almost there. This is going to be interesting, huh? 
Uh, yeah, it's going to be interesting. This is harder than it looks, y'all. That's all I got to say about that. Oh, I don't know about that. How do they do this? I am not, not a piper. I'm not a piper. I'm not a pie piper. Now there's a bigger frosting tip, but I was afraid my batter's gonna fall right through it and not give me any kind of good piping. So, okay, so we're gonna go like this. One, two, three, one, two, three. I might, I might just have to move my cutting line. Two. This is harder than it looks. They're all just going to be on your line, no matter what. That's not um, that's not easy to do. Let me see. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not happy with this. I don't like it. Mm. I may never pipe again. <laughs> I start at the side. Just my recipe. Maybe it's my tip. Maybe I do need the fatter tip. I was expecting big, fluffy dollops. Let's see if I can get it now. I know what I'm going to do. I don't like this at all. It looks goofy. I know what I'm going to do. I have it in my mind now. It's clear. Just have a vision in my mind. I'm gonna do something different. Still gonna use this tip, but I'm gonna do something different.
know what I'm going to do now. Pretty sure. Oh, you know when that happens, don't you? It's okay. I know, you're thinking it's different. It might be weird. I know, I like it though. I like it weird, I like it different. I like that nobody's doing it. I like it. I like it. I like it a lot. Have a little bit of soap left. I'm going to leave it. Ah, what are we going to do with you? I am liking this. This is pretty. I like it. Um,
think. I think I like it a lot. Yep, yep, I like it. I like it, I like it, I like it. I have a tiny bit of soap left. That's okay, I'm not gonna worry about that. <laughs> gonna get to the fun part. Okay. Wasn't that fun? <laughs> Alrighty, so we got going. I am going to do probably a little bit of everything. I'm gonna do my silver glitter. Um, I do this one. So this is the um, gold dust. I don't have any green glitter, but I think the gold is gonna look good just by itself. But I'm gonna do two different golds. There's that one. Better everywhere, right? Mm -hmm. All right, and then probably you can just sprinkly sprinkle. Do the solar glitter on top of this one. It's just sticking to me. Okay. My fingers are wet. These little tea things, they're fabulous. Hmm. <laughs> I'm gonna support you. Make your party. I think I got too much glitter there. But if I spritz it with a little bit of extra rubbing alcohol, it should spread down. That is just beautiful. Okay. We are going to let this sit up overnight. So there's the piping. I'm liking the waves. I think it's going to be beautiful. I'm gonna stick this in my oven overnight and let it set up with the light on. And we'll see you tomorrow. Oh, I'm so excited for my beer soap. It's looking fabulous. Sorry it took so long, but that's what happens when you're creating masterpieces of art. <laughs> I'm so excited. I like the two, the two colors. I think those are pretty. So I just have a little bit of um, soap batter, and I'm just going to stick it in a little mini whatever here. In a mini square.
and we're just squeezing it all out. There's usually a little bit here in the tip. You can just stick the bag in there and kind of squish it out. Note to self, I will add more butters when I want to do a piping recipe. This would have been a good recipe to swirl in. Um, Exciting. I did not much I don't like it. I made a mess everywhere. That's okay. See you all in the next video. Sorry it took so long. Sometimes they just do. Um, and that depends on the recipes and things like that and the weather, the temperature, and all kinds of crazy stuff. So if you'll like this one, it was a long one. Thanks for hanging in with me. Uh, I appreciate it so much. The next ones will be shorter, and I will see you in the next one. Bye y'all.